Hello, beautiful friends. This is going to be a really fun transmission. We will be working with something that is so sacred and so very special and not really so well known to humanity, and that is our body elemental. And so, <laughs> yes, Patricia has a new vlog. And our dear soul brother, Manny, who might be here on the call, I'm not sure, he helped me to create the audio and we're going to be turning it into a beautiful video because it's such a beautiful, beautiful, really transmission of the new earth. So I'll be working on that today. That's my purpose today. And so every day, as you know, we are in service. And yesterday we were, some of us, many of us, <laughs> working with the transmission of those beautiful beings, the cosmic beings who Patricia transmitted to us as really consecration. And so we consecrated our bodies to be an instrument for God, to be an instrument for the light of God, and to be a force of healing for all life. So when we wake up in the morning, it's an opportunity. It's such an amazing opportunity to step into that kind of service in love we always want to be stepping into service in love because you know that's the way that it's effective mm. all right thank you for letting me know i see it here so i'll speak about how i met my body deva what i learned from her what i'm still learning from her every single day and so on and so on and so i see that we have a beautiful pose here as well so when Divine Mother came to me for the first time in a way that it was just like unmistakable in 2017, then, you know, I always say she takes you on a ride and it is a ride of getting to know cosmic mother nature. And it's a constant expansion of knowing, knowledge, understanding, practices, existing and so on and so on. And so she gives you these, uh, I would say, big kind of transmissions and one of the big transmissions was meeting my body elemental. Now, you know, Patricia Kodarobles, she spoke about the body elemental, but really until Divine Mother came, I had no idea that really <laughs> this being can appear to us and this being is more than the body itself. And so I found this beautiful picture here, which I think explains the body elemental a little bit more. So I can only share what I experienced. And again, you know, everybody will have maybe a different experience, maybe similar, maybe same. There is not much in this world where people met their body elemental. And I can tell you how I know. And that is because once I met my body elemental, I wanted to know so much about the deva. And I only found very few people who have met their body deva. And so... I will be sharing what I learned from her the same, the, the way from her directly. And then also a beautiful little initiation of the body deva that I found to be very beautiful by someone called Aleya Dao Dao. And so I will share that as well. So Divine Mother very often taught me in the middle of the night. And I think part of it is because, you know, everybody's asleep. Your nervous system is attuning to silence. And wherever you live, most people in that area also are asleep. And so we have a better communication, basically, with the etheric worlds. And so um, <clears throat> in the middle of the night, suddenly Divine Mother comes and she says, meet your body, Deva. That's what she called it. And this amazing, beautiful being that actually looks nothing like me, which was very interesting to me, this beautiful elemental, really goddess appeared in front of me. And she started teaching me about the body elemental, the body deva. Now, Divine Mother, she is the ultimate deva. And again, whatever I share is just how it was delivered to me, through me. You know, sometimes the human doesn't unpack the information exactly how it was delivered, but it's okay. I do my best. And so there she was. And she was teaching me and giving me so much knowledge. And it was that once upon a time, humans were supposed to be the beautiful marriage between the body deva, the elemental being of mother nature, the rainbow body, really a true elemental of nature. And then consciousness, which for us is the divine self. And so, again, I just show how I was shown what looks like what. So the divine self is more like a geometry of light that comes from source as a fragment of source. And the body deva is so much more like what we understand to be the rainbow body itself. And so it's 
we were meant to be the marriage of the two that would create the third. As you know, alchemical process, you take two and you create the third. And that was supposed to be as the divine human, a divine being in a material elemental form. And so there she was. To me, it was definitely, even from men, it seemed like to me that every single body elemental actually comes from the body of the mother. And I always explain it the way that Divine Mother showed it to me, that nature is full of beings of nature, and we call them elementals. But there is a specific type of elementals that are responsible for really building, maintaining, restoring, designing, rejuvenating the physical part of us, which is the body itself. Now, Divine Mother took me back to the Garden of Eden, which really... You know, I cannot tell you <laughs> where it was, but there was a place on earth. There was a time on earth. Maybe it was a time on earth, ancient, ancient, ancient time when this truly worked beautifully. The consciousness of the divine self would come through and embody into these elemental forms and they work together to be perfection, really perfection, perfection of consciousness, perfection of form, perfection of health, perfection of energy, perfection of expression. And this has nothing to do with what today we understand to be physical beauty. I think what we today as a civilization understand to be physical beauty is completely distorted. So it was the beauty of light, the beauty of color. It was the beauty of geometry. It was the beauty of really lightness. And so this was the original creation. And then Divine Mother took me through what happened again through time. And that was the distortions upon distortions to a point that humans don't even know that they have an elemental being that they actually are part of and let alone, you know, the divine self. But that's okay. All of this is coming back. So... It was, be yeah, it was so, like, again, it was a huge story what happened. What happened is that other things came in, other things became part of this embodiment, and they were actually external, they were not even meant to be part of this, and so on and so on. But that's not the point. The point is that now, part of our ascension process is to get to know, really, ourselves, self-realization. And we do it understanding what the body deva is, and what the consciousness is. And that you as a divine human are supposed to be both, but not actually exclusively. And so we use the body elemental use is maybe not the good word, but we absolutely collaborate with this beautiful being of nature to be learning about this world in which we can actually be creating something so physical, like a material universe. And so material universe. So if we step into true awakening, if we truly realize who we are, we must realize that there is a combination. We are not just consciousness, but we are also not just the body elemental, but we in this world are both. And that is what it is. And so then we start using both equally. The body deva allows us to experiment, create, and be here now to make these amazing experiences to actually be physically part of the manifested nature. So that's one part of us. But then there is the consciousness part. And that is really the geometry that doesn't really have the body shape at all. And so that part too wants our attention. But together is who we are. And so there I was facing, you know, the histories, the very unbelievable things that happened to the body, how the body had to start aging, how the body has to get sick, had to get sick, how the body didn't run the energy anymore, because there was so much that went on and on and on. So what we know today to be our body is actually not the original blueprint. It's a very distorted blueprint, very damaged blueprint. But again, we are recovering, recovering, recovering. This is the ascension process. And so... Uh, the body deva told me, you know, number one, that the image, for example, for women, specifically, I think it's much more for women than men in this world, the body deva became uh, such a target for lack of love, and not loving the body deva, not loving the form, and maybe even trying to find self love depending on the shape, the face, and all of it. And so there was so much that the divine feminine actually projected as dysfunction onto the body. And it was not about having a certain form. It was not about having a pretty face. 
It was more about allowing the light to flow and loving the elemental and allowing the elemental to be our guide. And so I think this was a very big part of the fall of the divine feminine and also turning that into control. And so again, you know, I'm in a female body, so I've witnessed what happens in this world. There is a lot of stuff where, you know, especially as women, maybe you were born into a family where controlling the body was one way to live. And so I was born into a family where my mom was always on a diet. And so as soon as, you know, <laughs> it was like diet upon diet upon diet. And so, you know, I grew up thinking, oh, yeah, you have to diet. And then, you know, uh, through the spiritual work that we do, through the consciousness that we do, you actually liberate also the body deva. And so there is no such thing as being on a diet for the body deva, actually. The body deva is a being of nature, and she is our best, most reliable guide in a world like this. This is a world of mother nature, and she does want to flow. She doesn't want to be strictly controlled. She wants to actually be guided by her own intuition. She wants to be guided by her own senses, and she is within the body and around the body. She is beyond the body, actually. And so the number one thing was like, trust your body, Deva, to be your guide in this world. That's how it was meant to be. The body elemental for women and men was meant to be our guide in a physical world made of nature. Now, of course, some of us don't even live close to nature or one with nature or so hard to get to nature. So, you know, like uh, I always think about some European places where it's so hard to find nature. Where is it all gone? It's just cities now. Or, you know, here in the U.S. also you have places like this, of course. Absolutely. And so it doesn't make the body elemental thrive. The body elemental needs pure life force. She really does. And I call her she even for men because absolutely all elemental form came from the mother. And it might be just my own misunderstanding, but Divine Mother showed me specifically how all elemental form, meaning elementals, come out of her body. And so it is her rainbow light that nourishes, you know, originally our consciousness to be in a form. And so how does the body elemental want to operate in this world? So first, she told me when I started communicating with my body, Deva, I could always see her on the outside of me. It was so interesting as a being on the outside who was sustaining my form. And so it was about letting go of control, letting go of certain ideas, how exercise should be done or not. And like you said here in the chat, she is more the being of flow. She is the flow. And yesterday when we worked with those beings in the higher dimension where we went into the pools of Divine Mother, you maybe noticed that in the higher, higher uh, dimensions, it is more about the flow. And so the Tao Te Ching, for example, that I always promote, you know, to understand deeply the Tao Te Ching, it says to be soft and to be supple, to be fluid. And that is an expression of higher form. And so we want the energy to flow. And once again, you know, I speak about this often that in this world, we then started to do all these things, you know, to bring health back. And that's the Qigong very often. Very often you hear about the healing power of Qigong, for example. And that is actually just restoring the original flow in the body and around the body. It's working with energy. And that is because we want to be in the flow. The breath is so important to the body, Deva. So when she was outside of me and I was able to communicate with her, she taught me how to live in a body in a whole new way. And she liberated all the unconsciousness that I projected onto her when I was in my, you know, women should look like this, dress like this, exercise like this, eat like this, to be like this. She completely deleted all of it. And that's very unusual. And you just step into your physicality in a way that you just have to love the body and be grateful. And that brings about, of course, a whole new level of being. So truly, truly embodiment to me is getting to know the elemental, getting to know this goddess that we have. And for if you are in a male body, you don't have to accept the fact that, you know, <laughs> did I get fat? I stopped caring about this or that like I so much more focused on my relationship with nature and allowed her to do what she wanted so 
and definitely it's not you know the workout that I used to do it's so much less of that but much more of the flow so I did kundalini yoga this morning because she asked me to and it's not that every day she wants the same thing she really doesn't because you can imagine we have seasons we have uh, moon cycles we really observe nature and so there is no such thing I noticed with the body elemental that she would want the same thing every day because she also doesn't want to be in these boring routines and so sometimes she says today I want you to do kundalini yoga and so I did and normally I like to start my day with you know the breathing practices and I do like to have my coffee that I make with almond milk and the way she likes it she likes sweetness she really does like sweetness and so for example I'll reveal the recipe here if anyone's interested and that is, you know, organic food, for example, is important to her. She likes to be completely clean. I don't eat much, but when I eat, it is organic, local, fresh produce. And so that's pretty much just, she needs very little, actually. You never, ever feel like overeating. You never feel like hunger when you're not hungry. She really guides you and she just purifies you. And so there is a lot of purification. And so she does like sweetness, as far as I know from my body, Deva. And so I put dates into my coffee and I blend them with a fresh almond milk, which I make as well. And then I make it from spring water. So there's a lot that goes into it. <laughs> but um, so that's my morning kind of breakfast. And then I go into my practice. But this morning she said, you know, this morning I don't want the coffee first. I actually want to do Kundalini yoga on an empty stomach. And so, you know, the liberation has to also be the liberation of the mind and that's to say okay I'll just go with your flow because that's going to probably be the best and so sometimes we have these habitual thoughts about how things should be done but the body deva might guide you differently and so again you know it's, as always it is about surrender <laughs> but it is the surrender not to the human mind but actually to the body deva and surrender to the divine self and so the way that I start my day now, every single day is, you know, everybody will find their own way, but it is connecting to these two parts of us and acknowledging both, giving your body a big hug as you still lay in bed, connecting with your divine self, doing some breathing, always do some breathing when you wake up, whether it is fast, slow, deep, whatever you want to do, do some breathing because it awakens the spine, it awakens um, the nervous system. And then when you get out of bed, do stretch, just a little two minute stretch, whatever you can do, you know, bend forward, bend, turn sideways, you know, move your head, you know, stretch your feet, you know, stretch your hands. Very, very simple. She doesn't have anything that must be done a certain way. So, <clears throat> and she also is your deva of healing. That's very important. So, it happened to me recently with one of you here I see on the call the name and we would get on a call and the body day I wanted to speak now the thing is and this blew me away actually and I know who you are because it was very special to me a body day of another person started to talk to me and she was telling me things I really couldn't have known about which herb the person needed for a certain condition and so I'm trying to translate whatever the body Deva is saying, because she will speak the language that you speak to speak with you, but also speak in imagery of the herbs, the flowers, the essences. It's pretty incredible. And so, you know, then we Googled and found that that was exactly what the person needed. And I didn't know the plant at all. The body Deva started to show me what it looks like. And then she was telling me, like, just repeat after me, say this. And then that was it. So the body deva also has a solution for whatever condition we have. And again, to me, it's all about working with nature. So we can align with nature and allow her to heal us. So once I started working with my body deva, I would connect to her every morning. I connect to my divine self. And in the shower, you know, I always recommend connecting with your body, you know, through just kind of like massaging your own body, just bringing a life force and saying, thank you, my body deva for guiding me today. And then chanting, because to me, singing and chanting and toning is an expression of actually your physical body. 
right? And so that's also connecting with the water, the element of water, and maybe just connecting through your hands with the water and having a sacred moment with mother water through your body, Deva. And then, you know, the chanting to me, it's such an unusual way to connect because most humans in this world, they don't sing anymore. They don't chant, right? But for us mystics, that's what we do. We want to use the voice to be also a sacred tool. And that is also a sacred tool that, of course, creates harmony around us. And then to invite the divine self. Once again, the divine self is, you know, the circle of the 12 and bring in that rainbow light of the divine into the body, Deva, and give power to both of them to be your guides and to work in harmony with each other, which was the original design. They will guide you so perfectly. And so once again, you know, this is the multidimensional design of our being. We are consciousness in really an elemental being. That's amazing. So we have to acknowledge both parts. And, you know, we have many different stories of mystics who disconnected from the body, but within the body actually is the key to higher consciousness. And so we often obviously speak about it when we practice breathing, when we do some types of certain yogas. And again, you know, the body elemental will guide you what is best for you. Just ask her or him, if you want to refer to your body elemental as he, and just say, what is, what is best? Well, what would you like me to do? And again, the answer might surprise you sometimes. And so one thing that I learned from the body, Deva, uh, that she wants to be like light, unburdened, you know, just very light. And I used to take a lot of herbal supplements from Ayurvedic um, herbs. And again, the body elemental doesn't want too much, actually, just the perfect amount, little help here and there if necessary, but not being overwhelmed by anything. She taps into life force when we are outside. And so also making a sacred ritual with her and him every single day, it is important. The body elemental needs to be in nature. Absolutely. And that's why, for example, I do recommend just eating plant based, really fresh, clean diet, you know, because you don't want to be burdened by the things you put into your body, Deva. The body elemental originally did not need eating. And again, you know, things have happened right now. I do not recommend be, do not recommend being breatharian unless it is truly, truly, truly who you become like Ananda Mai, you know, that you're going to want to see. When it is truly the divine just saying you now need nothing, then you will know. But I think that trying and forcing it upon ourselves is not a good idea because it's a rewiring of the entire being. It is absolutely requires full on rewiring to be able to actually tap into the fullness of life force. And so originally the body elemental was sustained by divine life force. And that was it. And so now, you know, we are rewiring to be more and more and more sustained. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. So the pure pranic energy, absolutely. And, you know, the energization exercises that, um, that Yogananda brought to us, for example, or even the inner engineering with Sadhguru that I know and practice, those are also wonderful, wonderful um, tools that we have. And I have experienced this rewiring myself, but it was through some Chinese masters that someone introduced me to in Berlin. And these Chinese masters, I mentioned this before, they were able to rewire you actually, but they did it only for three weeks. They would rewire everything within you, all these energetic channels and connected you actually to true pranic energy of source of divine light. And then, oh my goodness, it was like a unbelievable state of being. It was indescribable, absolutely indescribable. Mm -hmm. Because I got to experience what it's like to be 100% nourished by divine source. And to me, that was such a different state of existing. But again, you know, we will get there. Our bodies are doing it right now. So I think everyone in this world who is on this spiritual path is actually experiencing I would say remarkable physical changes that happen on the cellular level and they really happen within the cellular waters as well. 
And so we help when we do. <laughs> yeah, if you like food, absolutely. I love food too. I really love it. You know, when I was rewired for three weeks, I still cooked for the family, but I was unable to put anything in my mouth because my body, Deva, didn't feel at all like that it was possible because she was nourished 100% by source. And to her, it seemed really, really strange. Why would I want to put anything in my mouth when it doesn't make any sense? And that was such an incredible experience. And again, you know, obviously these uh, Taoist masters, they had a powerful way to do this. But what I missed was the socializing, you know, going out with the family, being able to sit down and have a meal because we've been socialized to enjoy these things. And so again, you know, as long as I think we understand that when we put life force into our body and it can come through the plants, it can come through the herbs, it can come through the fruit, vegetables, and so on and so on, the fresh water. I'm just going to take a sip of fresh water. Our body, Deva, loves, loves, loves fresh spring water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I love it that Babaji would do that. And so we also have to be flexible. Um, and But just really, truly be loyal to the guidance of our body, Deva. So the body elemental can guide you to great well-being. So for me, what happened, I no longer know what it's like to feel fatigued or sick at all, at all for many, 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 many years since really working with the body elemental. And that is because she gave me that secret, which I always share, so I don't make it secret. And that is that within us is a tree of life. And this tree of life, you can understand it as consciousness, which it is, truly is. It is the pathway along which we evolve. So our consciousness evolves. But also within us is actually an energetic tree of life, which is of nature. And that tree of life needs to be planted outside every single day through your bare feet. And just have a moment with Mother Nature to recharge yourself every morning to really bring in this well-being, to be one with this unbelievable resource that flows through the earth and through cosmos. And so again, the approach that we take here is a dual approach, but really it's a holy trinity. And that is, we work with the body deva to be able to trigger those processes within that lead us to higher consciousness. And then that is the embodiment of the divine being. So, you know, some places in the world don't have easy access to spring water. Here in Northern California, we are really fortunate. So you can have spring water delivered to your home, which is wonderful. And so, you know, I also have traveled to places where it's really impossible to get anything. And so will we wait on the new earth? So as you know, Patricia gave us a transmission of the new earth. And I'm going to speak about it a little bit before we go into our kind of amazing activation of the body deva <clears throat> so once again listen to your body deva and liberate your mind from what you believe is good or bad or should be done or should not be done so <clears throat> the body deva will know every day what is best breath is really important posture is really important and the body deva that i know <laughs> loves herbal teas and so as you drink a lot of beautiful spring water also the herbs and having a sacred ritual with your herbal tea because that is the intelligence of nature communicating with the intelligence of your body deva and so a lot of well-being can be found within the body elemental another thing that i recommend is having some flowing practice and again that could be spontaneous qigong standing outside planting your feet into the ground, really connecting deeply consciously with the earth so that she can send all the life force up your feet because that's important. And then downloading life force from cosmos, that's the other part. We are the one in the middle between the two, between the earth and cosmos is you. And your body, Deva, is the receiver. And so receiving, receiving, if the body, like Deva, loves rest, you know, some, some are very hyperactive, some are very restful. It really depends. Just go with that flow. And so another thing that I noticed is, for example, the spontaneous Qigong, where you ask your body, Deva, to move with 
the force of nature and she will start moving and sometimes you break into dancing and you start dancing and singing and all of it is bringing great well-being so and then of course you know then we have the other part of us uh the consciousness and that's why we do the meditations so we nurture both parts of our being so that we are in that holy relationship with both and create that holy trinity within so <clears throat> The other thing that I find very helpful is acupuncture. And acupuncture, I think, once again, is designed to allow the flow of this rainbow light to really flow through you and bring great well-being. So that's just my recommendation. And so let us go into this beautiful activation. So after I met my body deva, I really wanted to speak to someone who also met their body deva, because to me, that was very rare. And so I will show you what I found. I have a few things I wanted to show you. But I found this lady who encountered her body deva as well, Alea Deo. And so I bought from her a meditation in her store, which I will play. I will pause the recording of this uh, so that, you know, we don't violate any <laughs> uh, copyright. But that's where I got my meditation. I think it was like $10, but I will share that one now with you. So it is connecting with the body, Deva. So I only use the one that I have, and this one is uh, awakening your body, Deva. So I'll pause the recording. And let it be so. So this is a very different type of work that we haven't done before. And it is absolutely amazing to get in touch with that part of your being, remembering that that is part of our multidimensional design. And every single day, you build the relationship. You might be able to start seeing the body deva. You might be able to get a... The first thing I always ask when I start working with certain levels of my own being, I ask for a signal so that I know which part am I connecting to. So when I ask my divine self to give me a signal that we are fully connected, I will see light coming from my chest. When I ask my body deva to connect to her, it you know again you you will have your own, but sometimes it's suddenly you start smiling. Sometimes you just have a kind of sensation of what it was like when you were a child. There are many different signals that beings can give you, and so always ask. And they can get very physical, and of course they can get very uh, in a way that you will see through your senses and uh, get a touch. And so, for example. So this being, the elemental, is a being of nature, but also runs through the spine, just like the divine self runs through the spine. So the spine, that's why, is really, and our body elemental is the one who is the rainbow body around us, but it's a combination of both. It also is rainbow light. It is the manifested mother, in a way. But we also have the consciousness as being as rainbow light and source light. And so I wanted to share a few things how to work with your body, Deva specifically. So if the body elemental is the being of nature, of our manifested nature, then that being needs nature. And I'm going to speak of her as a she. She will guide you to what she needs. Sometimes she just needs to sit on the ground. Sometimes she needs to go and lay down outside on the ground. She doesn't care about the weather. She loves the weather. And so to her, it just whatever she wants to do, let her do it. Sometimes she wants to touch soil. Sometimes she just wants to be outside and breathe deeply. And you will start noticing how nature starts reacting to you. So for example, here we have hummingbirds. But every single time I do this practice, all the hummingbirds come and they just sit above me. And I got used to it because it's amazing the confirmation that you are actually connecting with the spirit of Mother Nature. So other things that you can start to use is communication through also something physical. Your body, Deva, is a physical being. It is your guide of the physical reality. And so I find, for example, that if you give your body, Deva, the permission to communicate with you, for example, through tarot cards, I love, this is the deck that I love, then your hand is the hand of the body, Deva. And so she will be drawn to the energy that she wants to communicate with you. So absolutely 100%. But, you know, it comes from a, your own command. You say, my body elemental, my body deva, please communicate with me through this, you know, whatever cards you use. 
Now the body deva needs a lot of water. You want to always be drinking water all day long as much you know, as is healthy for you. Again, depending on what the body deva tells you. But again, in this physical reality, this is the word of our world of our ma. Ma is a water being. And so we need a certain level of fluidity within us. And so again, you can play with the water, sing to the water, activate the water and singing at least once a day, sing a song. And this is beyond chanting, but let your body deva sing a song. Whether it is a song you know, or it's a song that comes through her. Very often she comes up with songs. And so let her sing because that is, you know, as children, we used to do that. The other thing is that, uh, for example, I always recommend working with Orosoma. And if you are in the US, we have um, the Orosoma North America store. Right now they are selling out everything because they're closing. And so everything is like $12 cheaper. <laughs> so definitely, if you um, haven't worked with Orosoma, I do recommend. So Orosoma is a magical, magical technology that was given to us. I think it was in the 80s. I was channeled from higher dimensions to humanity. And this is a, I know I'm so sad that they are closing, but um, I quickly bought as many as I could. <laughs> So when you go to the website, I'm going to share this with you. So to me, this is like the technology of consciousness and mother nature. So I'm going to, so this is the US site. It's actually a British company. So you will find them in the UK, Germany, Austria, everywhere, Canada. I'm sure they have stores everywhere in the world, but this is the US one, which I really like because they tell you a lot about each bottle. And so the year that it's called Equilibrium Bottles, these are sacred potions your body deva is the one who works with potions that's mother nature magic alchemy to expand the consciousness that you are it always is working with consciousness and so for example you ask your body deva when you go to one of these sites and you say my body deva what would be the most beneficial combination of crystals colors and flower essences that are embodied as a spirit in these bottles choose for me and so she will be using your senses, meaning intuition, which is her sense, but also your eyesight to look at these beautiful colors, always working with the rainbow light, of course. And then she will say, well, I think right now you really need El Moria. And so you go then and here on the American website, you can read quite a bit about these amazing bottles. And it always is something that will be your strength and then potential challenge. It doesn't even have to be. But then the bottle has really a magical power to transform us. So I've been working with these for almost 30 years and I still work with them every day. And I used to use just one, but now I really am going for it. So I usually have three or four that I use every single day and you use them on your body and it tells you where to apply it. So you use it on the body, on the body to create changes in your etheric body, in your spiritual body in your mental body, in your emotional body. And it takes about three months for each bottle to be emptied all the way. So it's a very beautiful process of nature. So uh, for example, you know, um, these are so, so powerful and they are always master beings. They are closing for good and soon. I think they are trying to sell everything out uh, because they had some kind of disagreement with the um, mother company in the UK. It, it's, a, it's a shame, but you know, sometimes even within consciousness circles and consciousness actually creeps in, as you can imagine. And so <clears throat> this is very powerful work for the body, Deva, to allow your consciousness to thrive. And through the body, you deliver a shift. Now, I wanted to speak a little bit as we close about a shift, and then we will sing a song together <laughs> for the body, Deva. So, you know, um, for example, these are made from crystals somewhere in the mountains. It's a very sacred process. They have so many different crystals within them. All this technology was actually um, downloaded from higher dimensions, and it's uh, full of magic. Let's put it this way. Um, for example, my first one that I ever used, it was kind of given to me by my guides. And they said, there is this thing called, or some of these little bottles and you need one. And so that's how I first came across it so many years ago. 
and it completely deleted certain patterns that I kind of had within me from my upbringing. And for example, you know, a lot of people struggle with things like self-love. So you can completely just rewire yourself to actually always be and have a sense of your divine love within you just with these amazing bottles. But I wanted to say how this, you know, all of this energy work works. PTSD also, absolutely all of it. You can rewire all the emotional body. You can rewire mental body. And that is the key. Now, never give up. I think they have videos on how to use them. You have to shake them and only a few drops should come out. So I think they have videos. So let's say you are dealing with something in your in your elemental body or you're dealing with something in your emotional body. You're dealing with something in your mental body. Maybe you're dealing with something etheric from a past life. And it seems like it's not going away even though you've done so much cleansing. You've done so much work. And to me, the key is not to give up the key is not to stop doing what you're doing it is actually to always continue until it's gone and one day it will be gone so it seems like sometimes we do so much purification with the violet flame you could be doing purification with yogananda every day and i mentioned yesterday on the call in the evening i had to purify for two years every day and it seemed like oh is this ever going to go away <laughs> whatever it is you know in our human self but if we keep doing, every single action has actually an effect. And you just never know when you come to the last 1%. And so, you know, always keep doing what you're doing because it is a path and everything does matter. It actually does. And so maybe you're doing purification with Orin and you feel like you wake up and you're still the same person, but that is not true. You have changed. Maybe we have just not realized it yet. But from my own experience, you can absolutely, absolutely 100% transform every part of yourself. And it's, I don't call it so, uh, what is it called? Personal development. To me, personal development is very different. But energy work, the work we do with Orin, that brings transformation the work we do with Yogananda, that brings transformation. For those of you who have done inner engineering, that brings transformation. You just never know how, well, unless you do, how many bits and pieces are still left to be transformed. But I always want to make the divine promise to you that as long as you do stuff, <laughs> one day you will be blown away by the huge breakthroughs that come. And, um, you know, it's just how it is. And so the purification, every time we do it, it makes a big difference. But one day it is the ultimate, bam, done. And that's it. And then it's called enlightenment. <laughs> and so the little things we do can have a huge effect. And to me, Orosoma is one of them. And so let us close with a song. Today, we have been talking about the body elemental. And so I will share here a song, which is really one of the elemental songs. Let me just find it. Um, Earth, my body. And so this is a great song. I'm going to again pause because then YouTube is angry and they don't allow me to share videos if I have songs in them. So let me stop recording. Mm-hmm. <laughs>